A man and a woman walk into a restaurant. The host guides them to their table, then goes into the kitchen and informs the chef that the VIP guests have arrived. The two sous chefs are excited as the head chef, Pierre, collects the dishes to serve to the guests. One of the sous chefs, Joy, tells the other about the VIP guest Cherie, who is an influencer and the most famous food reviewer in town. If Cherie gives a favorable review, it would help with the restaurant's business. The other chef feels pressured and tells her that he feels he should have let the dish cook for a bit longer. On a farm, a man, James, and his mother welcome the rest of their family, his brother David, sister-in-law Rebecca, and their kids Dylan and Riley, home for Christmas. David tells James that he looked at the account books for the farm and wishes to talk to him about it. James brushes him off. When Joy gets home, her boyfriend Gabe tells her that he spoke to Pierre and asked for a week's leave for her as a surprise, so she can join him and his family at their family home in Vermont for Christmas. Joy is surprised and worried, as she is hoping to get a promotion to the position of executive chef at the restaurant. But when Gabe coaxes her that he has already arranged everything, she finally relents. Gabe tells her that he needs to fly down the same day, as his mother has set up a meeting for him with a potential donor to his hospital. So she promises to drive down there the next day, after her lunch shift at the restaurant. Just then, she finds out that Cherie has posted her review. She and Gabe watch the video where Cherie criticizes the restaurant, but she appreciates Joy's dish. Later, Gabe packs his stuff as Joy looks on. When he goes to get his stuff from the restroom, Joy finds a ring box inside his bag. She realizes he is planning to propose to her on Christmas Eve. When he comes back into the room, Joy feigns ignorance. Gabe asks her to pack some formal wear, as his parents will expect her to be dressed appropriately. Joy is taken aback, but does not show it to him. James and his niece, Riley, catch up on how they have been. Riley asks him if they will have to sell the farm, and tells him that she and her family can move back to help him. James tells her affectionately that she needs to go to school. He reassures her that he will find a way to save it. They spot a shooting star and both make a wish. Riley asks James what he wished for, and he reveals he wished for more snow, enough to help with the maple sapping. When he asks her about her wish, she refuses to tell, worried that telling it to someone will jinx it. The next day, when Joy goes back to work, she finds Pierre is miffed at her because of Cherie's review. He disregards her suggestion in favor of her colleagues, telling her that even if Cherie liked her dish, the restaurant was criticized. Later, her father visits her to wish her a happy Christmas, and gives her a gift to put under the tree. She tells him about meeting Gabe's parents. He is happy about it, as Gabe is a good person. Later at home, as she packs her stuff to leave for Vermont, she realizes she does not have good formal clothes. So she goes shopping and ends up becoming late, which leads to her driving out in the snowstorm. On the other side, James and David discuss the maple farm. David tells James that their father had a lot of debts, and now James is also falling back on repayments. He informs him about a potential buyer interested in buying the farm. James refuses to even consider it. He is determined to find a way to save the farm, as it is their legacy. Joy drives through the storm, but loses her balance, and the car swerves and plows into a snow dune. She calls Gabe for help. He asks her to contact a mechanic instead, as he would be able to help her more, explaining that he has to meet someone, and driving out in the snowstorm doesn't make sense. Joy is stunned at his cavalier attitude. On the other hand, James is on his way back to the farm. He was running a couple of errands for his mother. He spots Joy's car a minute before he spots Joy, waving her arms to make him stop. Even as he stops, she topples over due to her high heels. James hurries out to help her. She asks for his help in moving her car, but he checks it and tells her that only a mechanic could help. He also informs her that he just came from the town, and saw the mechanic closing his shop because of the storm. He then offers to take her to the farm with him. She is worried at first, as she doesn't know him well. Just then, his mom calls asking after him, and why he's delayed. James explains the situation to her. Joy overhears their conversation, as his mom instructs him to bring Joy home as the weather is getting worse. Reassured that it will be safe, Joy goes back with him. In the car, they chat, and Joy tells him she is joining Gabe and his family for Christmas, and will possibly get engaged soon. When they reach the farm, James's mom and Riley welcome Joy. They offer her refreshments and dinner, but she claims she is tired and would like to sleep. James shows her to her room. She calls Gabe and tells him about being at the Maple Farm. Gabe shows doubt at the prospect of her staying with strangers, but she reassures him that they are good people. He informs her that his mother has reserved them a lunch at a prestigious restaurant, and so he hopes she can make it back by then. The next morning, Riley and James's mom invite Joy to breakfast but she politely declines and asks James to drive her to the mechanic's workshop. The mechanic, Charlie, informs her that the car will take a week to get ready, as he will have to order some parts. Left with no other option, Joy returns to the farm with James. Riley is very happy to see her back, and so are the other family members. As Joy sits down for breakfast, James tries to get Dylan to help him outdoors, to try and get him away from the computer for a bit. He declines, and Joy offers to help instead. She and James go out to the maple trees, checking the lines. As they walk, they start chatting about the farm and James's work. James explains that before his father's passing, 
They used to work the farm together, but since he's been gone, James has been doing most of the work himself. She shares about her mother, how she passed when she was little. And now it's only her and her father, but they aren't very close. James wonders about Gabe and why he didn't come down to get her, so she explains that he's busy with work, and the weather is bad, and him coming down just to get her wouldn't be practical. Even to her own ears, the excuses sound empty. James tells her that if it were him, he would never let his girlfriend be stranded alone. As they walk back, James admits to judging Joy by her appearance. He believes she would be very high-handed. He apologizes, and she teases him about it. Joy asks him if she could repay their hospitality by cooking dinner for them. As Joy begins cooking, she asks Dylan to help, and he shyly agrees. She ropes him in as a sous chef and they make the dinner together, much to the family's delight. James especially thanks her for getting Dylan involved. Later, James and Joy chat while James does the dishes. Just then, Riley walks in and invites Joy to help her with the Christmas decorations. Joy happily agrees. Riley explains to her that she makes special ornaments every year for Christmas, and this year, she plans to make magical wish ornaments, glitter decorated ornaments with a wish written as a note inside them. She and Joy start making the ornaments as James and Rebecca watch them. Rebecca comments that Joy is a very special person, and James agrees. Later at night, Joy is sitting outside looking at the stars. James comes out to sit with her and brings her a blanket. Joy tells James that he is very lucky to have such a beautiful place to call home and spend this wonderful time with his family. James teases her that it took crashing into the snow for her to take some time to relax. She asks him if he has any other wishes, apart from working the farm. James tells her he loves the farm, and that all his family memories are there, it's more than work for him, it's his home. Joy reveals wishfully she hopes to have something like that someday. James cheekily asks her if she doesn't have that with Gabe, which makes Joy feel uncomfortable, so she goes to bed. The next morning, David and James are in a heated discussion about the farm when Joy walks in. James uses her presence as an excuse to end the discussion. As David steps out, Joy asks James if there is a problem. James brushes her off and invites her out to play in the snow with the kids. Instead of joining Riley and Dylan in making snow castles, Joy starts throwing snowballs, and the play turns into a snowball fight. Later, Joy and James walk through the farm when Joy gets a call from Charlie, the mechanic, informing her that her car is ready. She lies to him that she is unsure when she can come down to pick it up. She even lies to James, reluctant to leave the farm just yet. That evening, she makes paper snowflakes with Riley and Rebecca. She also enjoys some warm bread with freshly made maple butter, prepared by James's mother. She starts chatting with Rebecca, who shares her and David's story. Rebecca explains that they met in college, where she studied interior design, but could never practice, as she got pregnant with Dylan, and then later Riley came along, so her life changed. She calls it a life swerve. When Joy asks her about David and James, she explains that they were very close, but now David feels James blames him for going off to college while James was stuck working at the farm. She says that the farm has very warm memories for all of them, even the kids. She and David even got married on the farm, but she shares her worry that due to financial issues, they may have to sell it. Riley admits to James that she wished upon the shooting star that someone would arrive to save the farm, and she believes that it's Joy. James tries to explain to her that Joy being there is just a coincidence, but she refuses to believe him. Later, Joy and Dylan make some maple sugar when James walks in and tells Joy he wants to show her something. As they leave, he asks her if she and Gabe want to have a family, seeing how natural she is with Dylan and Riley. Joy explains they haven't discussed it yet. James takes her to his grandfather's cottage on the property. He shows her where his grandfather started the syrup farm. He shares with her his vision and his feelings about the farm and its legacy. He also gives her some maple liquor he has made. Joy tells him that she overheard his argument with David and inquires whether he is selling the farm. He tells her that things have been tough, but he hopes for a Christmas miracle. In turn, he asks her about her dreams and wishes, what she likes to do for fun. She says she only wishes for the executive chef position, but then revises her opinion and reveals that she wants to make her father proud. Her father wanted her to be a doctor, like him, but she chose to cook, so getting the executive chef position would mean she's finally done something worthwhile in his eyes. James promises her father would be proud of her, no matter what, just like he feels his own father would be proud of him. Joy tells James she feels at ease with him and can share her thoughts with him. They have a moment where they almost kiss, but Joy stops before they do because she feels guilty, and James also apologizes. She makes up her mind that she will leave the next morning, as they need to be practical, which means she has to go back to Gabe. James gets home, and David is waiting for him. He tells James that the buyer has given a very generous offer. James tells him to accept it, as he needs to stop thinking from his heart. Riley finds Joy in her room, packing her bags. She gets upset, and tells her about making the wish, and Joy being the answer to it. 
Joy tries to tell her it's a coincidence. Riley is upset, but she reluctantly accepts Joy's words. As she leaves, she mentions that the house felt less empty with the extra rooms filled, giving Joy an idea. She gathers the family in the living room, and shares with them the idea that they should turn the house into a B and B Rebecca could help design the place. Their mother could be the host, David could handle the business part of it, and James could give the Maple Farm tours. She explains that the farmhouse could be a very beautiful holiday getaway. The entire family gets very excited about the plan. They each start working on their part. Joy uses her connections in social media to advertise the farm. She posts a video with Riley and tags Shuri. She also takes bookings on behalf of the family for the grand opening on Christmas Day. That afternoon, as she is working in the living room, James approaches her and starts to discuss the previous night's almost kiss. She tells James about Gabe's parents and their high standards. Dylan creates a website for the bed and breakfast, much to Rebecca and David's surprise. Later, David and Joy have a sweet conversation, where he tells her that he is so grateful to see the kids and Rebecca so happy. But he works in the city, and how will he manage? She reminds him about life swerves. Later, David helps James put up a banner at the door. Thereafter, the kids, Joy, and Rebecca start making snow castles. James joins in, but David starts to go back to work, but then changes his mind and returns to play. James and David share a hug. Just as they are going back inside, Joy gets a notification that Shuri has agreed to review the place. Finally, after making the arrangements, she gets ready to leave. Everyone is very upset to see her go. James's mother asks her to come visit whenever she wants to, as she's family now. Riley gives her that year's special ornament to hang on the Christmas tree. After the family leaves, James and Joy are alone by the Christmas tree. She admits she has never been made to feel so at home, not even with Gabe. James promises her that she will always have a home with them. The next day, they say their goodbyes. Riley gives her a glitter acorn to hang on her tree. Later, James drives her to the mechanic's place. Joy gets into her car and drives away, James is upset to see her go. Moreover, he realizes that he has fallen for her. Joy finally arrives at Gabe's parents' house. She is surprised at the opulence of the place. She meets Gabe, who is very happy to see her, but goes on to tell her about the day's scheduled dinner. He tells her he has some business to attend to, so she can relax in the house. Joy feels out of place in the uncluttered, perfect home. On the other hand, Shuri and her boyfriend arrive at the farm. The whole family welcomes them. Joy meets Gabe's brother and sister-in-law, who call her an entrepreneur. She does not understand why they would say so, but smiles nonetheless. They hurry off after sharing greetings, to prepare for the evening. Joy is once again left all alone, so she starts making paper ornaments for the Christmas tree. Just then, Gabe's parents walk in, and are surprised to see her dressed casually, and doing crafts on the couch. His mother gets a bit upset at that, and rudely informs Joy that the evening dinner is a formal affair, and hopefully Joy will wear something appropriate. Joy is taken aback by their cool formality. Later, she asks Gabe what he has told his family about her, and is disappointed to know he has not been completely honest about her profession with them. He told them she was an entrepreneur, instead of a chef. She asks him if he is ashamed of her. Just then, she gets a call from Pierre, which she ignores, but Gabe insists that she should pick it up. And while doing that, he lets slip that he pushed his influence to get her the promotion. Joy is shocked and upset, realizing that Gabe does not believe in her talent. At dinner, Gabe raises his toast to propose to her, but before he does, she leaves the table. Her phone pings, and she finds a notification about Shuri posting a new video, hurriedly watching the review of the farm. Shuri gives it a thumbs up. Gabe rushes out, asking her why she would leave in the middle of dinner. She tells him she is aware of his intention to propose. She asks him if they should wait, but Gabe is sure the timing is perfect which is when she realizes he means the timing being his mother's mayoral re-election dates. She wants more from life. She wants to explore herself, her hobbies, and what she wants to do in life, apart from her work. He is surprised by what she is saying, but Joy barrels on, she has finally discovered herself, and so she cannot marry him. She asks to borrow his car to return to the farm. While driving back, Joy calls the farm. Riley picks up, and Joy tells her she is on her way back, but to keep it a secret from the others, as she wants to surprise them. But Riley lets it slip in front of Rebecca and James. James rushes out to look for Joy, as it is snowing. He drives to the same place where he met her before, and finds her car stuck again. Even as he stops the car, Joy falls on the snow, just like the first time. She tells him excitedly that she and Gabe broke up. Being with him and his family feels right to her, she loves him, and would like to stay with him at the farm. James is elated, pulling her into his arms for a kiss to seal the deal. One year later, it's Christmas again, and James opens the front door to let Norm, Joy's father, in. Joy is surprised to see him. He reveals James told him about how Joy helped him and his family revive the maple farm. He finally tells her that he is proud of her. James takes Joy back to the cottage. Joy is pleasantly surprised to see it fully decorated. He reveals the whole family helped him decorate it. A year ago, he made a wish for more snow, while Riley made a wish for someone to come to save their farm. And Joy came. He calls her their Christmas miracle. He knew after spending just a week with her that he wanted to spend the rest of his life with her. 
He gets down on one knee and proposes to her, delighting Joy, who accepts enthusiastically as they share a passionate Christmas kiss. 